Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at multiplying using the pocket method. So I've updated this video just to have a few more examples um, around how to multiply with decimals. Uh, so hopefully that will help just make um, that a little bit easier and obviously avoid any confusion. Now, lots of people don't uh, use this method because they've got so used to using the column method. However, in my experience um, teaching, people always, 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 always seem to make lots of mistakes, especially with decimals, when using the column method. So I would highly, highly recommend you get used to using this. One of the things people say is, oh, it takes too long to set up, but the quicker or more times you do it, the quicker you get. You don't have to use a ruler. That would take a bit more time. You could just do it scruff, just to um, get the actual working done on a bit of paper. But this method just relies on you knowing your times tables, and you can multiply any number um, big or small, as well as decimal numbers as well. And it, it's just knowing your times table. So I highly recommend this one. Okay, so let's get going. The first thing you need to do is if you have a two digit number and a two digit number, you need to have two columns by two rows. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick the digits one and three on each column, and then four and five on each row. And the reason why it's called the pocket method is we're just going to draw some pockets on the end of each row and at the end of each column like so. What you also need to do is draw a diagonal. So once you've got your uh, squares, make sure you go diagonals and it must go bottom left to top right like so. Must go like that, otherwise it won't work. Okay, and then all we do is we just use our times tables. So three times four is 12, three times five is 15. So notice I'm putting the tens in the top and the units in this one here. One times four to fill in this one here, which is obviously four. So if there are no tens, I just put a zero and I put the units there, so zero, four. And then one times five is five. So again, zero, five. And that's it, as simple as that, you filled it in. So let's get the answer then. So the diagonals, all I'm going to do is add the values going down the diagonal. Well, this one's easy. It's just got one, so it's going to fall into that pocket there, which is five. Here, going down this diagonal, I have two plus one plus five, which means eight is going to end up in that pocket. One, add four, add zero, will end up in that pocket, which is five. And then, of course, I have zero there to finish off with. So what's my answer? Well, quite simply, I'll just read it around like that, which is 585, and you're done. It's as simple as that. Let's have a go at this one then. So I've got a three digit by a two digit. So I've done three columns by two rows. And again, just put each digit at the top. So four, eight, five, three, and one. You don't have to use a ruler. Like I said, you can just do this very quickly rough hand. I'm using a ruler just so it's clearer to read, but obviously using a ruler will slow you down slightly. And pockets. Like so. Okay, let's do it then. So five times three is 15, five times one is five, so I put my zero, five in like so. Eight threes, 24. 8 times 1 is 0 and 8, 4 times 3 is 12, so 1, 2, and 4 times 1 is 4, so 0, 4. So again, just times tables, and now a little bit of adding. So 5 will go into that one, because that's the only one going down that diagonal. This diagonal here, 5, add 0, add 8, which will give me uh, 13. So I put the units in which is a three, and I carry the one over to the next diagonal. One, add four, add zero, add four, add one, gives me 10, so zero, because it's the units, carry the one over, because that's the tens. Two, add two, add zero, add one is five. And of course, then I put my one there. So my final answer, one, five, zero, three, five, which of course is 15,000 and 35. Just a quick one with the carries, if that was, if I added all these up and it was like 20 or something, so yes, let's say it was 20, I'd put the zero there and I'd carry a two over. You always carry the tens column over if you like. 
Okay, so let's have a look at this one then. So slightly bigger. So we've got a three by three. So three digit number, so three columns, three digit number, so three rows. So I'm going to have six, seven, seven, five, four, and eight. I'm just going to draw my diagonals on. Remember, bottom left to top right, like so. So all your diagonals flow in the right direction, basically flows into the pockets. And I'll just draw my pockets on there again. These don't have to be posh or neat, it just needs to uh, be functional. One of the biggest things I see is people doing this really, really small. Don't be shy to do it nice and big, so then you can see what you're doing. Okay, so let's fill this in then. Seven times five is 35. Seven times four is 28 and 7 times 8 is 56 7 times 5 is 35 again 7 times 4 28 again and 7 times 8 is 56 again uh, 6 times 5 is 30 6 times 4 24 uh, 6 times 8 is 48 okay so a bit of times tables to fill that in and then we go down the diagonals so we've got 6 and then we're going to add this column up here, so 8 add 5 uh, is 13, and then we need to add the 6, which is 19, so 9 carry the 1. 5 add 2 is 7, add 8 is 15, add 5 is 20, add 8 is 28, add the 1 is 29, so 9, and then carry the 2 over, because it was 29. 3 add 5 is 8, add 2 is 10, add 4 is 14, Add 4 is 18, and then 2 is 20, so 0, carry the 2. 3, add 0 is obviously 3, add the 2 is 5, add the 2 is 7, and then I'm left with my 3 there, in which case my answer, I'll write it down here because I haven't got enough space to step there, is 3, 7, 0, reading it from this way, 9, 9, 6, so 370,996. So really, really nice and simple uh, to work out um, multiplying whole numbers. So what about decimals? Like I said, using decimals it is so easy and this is why I love this method. So let's have a look at some decimals. So the first two here are exactly the same as the first two examples I had on the previous page. So I've just filled it in exactly the same. However, look, I've changed the questions ever so slightly. I have 1.3 times 4.5, and I have 4.85 times 3.1. So all I've done is just add some decimals. But the starting bit is exactly the same. Ignore the decimals and just work it out exactly the same as we did on the previous piece of paper. Once you've done that, you can add your decimal points in. So 1.3, 1.3, put the decimal point on that vertical line there, 4.5, 4.5, put it on the horizontal line there. And then all you're going to do is you're just going to draw a nice vertical line going down where that decimal point is, and a horizontal line going from where that decimal point is, and you're going to find out where they meet, and wherever they meet, you just go down the uh, diagonal line there, and that's where your decimal point is going to be. So that would be 5.85, like so. It's like the same thing here, ignore the decimal points, work it out like I did on the previous page, then put them in. So 4.85 means the decimal point needs to go along there. 3.1 is there. Nice vertical line going down, First, uh, horizontal line going across. Where they meet, they meet there, go down the diagonal, so it will be there. So the, the answer would be 15.035. Okie dokie. So let's have a go at this one then. So you have 0 0.76 times 0 0.79. So I'm going to set it up exactly the same way. I've got three digits here two digits here, so three columns, two rows. I'm ignoring the decimal points, I'm just going to fill it in. Six times zero, anything times zero is zero, seven times zero is zero, and zero times zero is zero, so that was easy. Uh, six times nine is 54, 
7 times 9 is 63, 0 times 9 is obviously 0. Just as we did before, go down the diagonal, so 4, 0, add 5, add 3 is 8, 0, add 0, add 6, add 0 is 6, that's going to be a 0, that's going to be a 0. Put in your decimal points, go straight down where that one is, go straight across where that one is, that's where they meet, we go down there, so I'm going to have 0 0.684 as my final answer for that. Okay, so using the column method, that becomes a bit tricky. Using this method, easy. And finally, what happens when you have a decimal and a whole number? So I just threw this one in here because people tend to get a bit muddled up with this whole number, but it's really easy. Again, set up exactly the same way. Three digits, three columns, two digits, two rows. Uh, fill it in as normal. So five times two is 10, five times seven, 35. 8 times 2, 16, 8 times 7, 56, 0 times 2, anything times 0 is 0, 0 times 7 is obviously 0 as well, 5 goes into that pocket, 0, add 3, add 6 is 9, 1 add 6 is 7, add 5 uh, is 12, so 2 carry the 1, 1 add 0, add 0, add 1 is 2, and then I put my 0 in there, decimal point obviously is 0 point. 85. So I'm going to draw my vertical line down there like so. And for 27, the decimal point is there, it's just at the back. So whenever you have a whole number like 27, it's 27.000. So the decimal point would be there. We don't write 27.0 because there's no point. Now uh, the actual number is just 27. But technically, that's where the decimal point would be, in which case I have my 27 my decimal point would be there. So whenever you have a whole number, it is still there, we just don't write it. In which case, I can now draw my horizontal line like so. That's where they meet. I go down the diagonal, which is really easy, it's just there. So my answer there would be 22.95. So, there's some examples, guys, of how to use the pocket method to multiply whole numbers and decimals. Hopefully, I've converted you into using this method because I think it's absolutely fantastic. Let's say it's just times tables and a bit of adding, and you can multiply any numbers, including some really horrible decimal numbers. So, hopefully, that helps, guys. Thanks for watching.